there has been a recent missile attack at a town called Kramatorsk at a railroad station. And there are uh, apparently dozens of people now killed. These were people who were trying to evacuate uh, because Russia is about to take this area. Now, the missile that hit this area is a Tochka U, and that's not according to Russian media. That's according to the BBC. This article right here, Kam Kamatorsk Station Attack, what we know so far. Uh, please note what this looks like. Take a look at this and keep this in mind, because I'm going to show you where else uh this scene has played out in a civilian a purely civilian area and who was the obvious perpetrator of that take a close look at this and and also note that they wrote uh for for you children uh on behalf of the children some, something like that on the side of the missile uh so why why would russia write that on the side of this old missile that they don't even use anymore uh, and it says right here, both sides say Tochka U missiles were used. Russia being accused of using an Iskander short range ballistic missile with a cluster munition warhead. But then he later corrected himself as saying it was a Tochka U. Why is that important? Because Russia doesn't use Tochka U missiles anymore, they use Iskander missiles. The only country in this war right now using Tochka U missiles and using them on population centers, not on military targets, is Ukraine. And I'm going to show you an indisputable case of Ukraine firing a Tochka U at a civilian population, a case the, the US, uh, the European Union, the UK said absolutely nothing about. They couldn't have cared less uh, regarding this other case. But now that it's Kramatorsk and it's at this late hour in the war where Ukraine has depleted its military power, uh, Mariupol has all but fallen, a land bridge established from Crimea all the way to the border with the Russian Federation, and now Ukraine's forces, tens of thousands of forces about to be encircled and either forced to surrender or annihilated. Now we have this instant where this missile has hit a civilian area and now the entire West is screaming about it. And remember, this is the same West that admits that they themselves and Ukraine are fighting an information war. Keep that in mind. They're saying both sides say a Tochka U missile was used. Russia is saying that because Russia knows that they don't use these missiles. And uh, the best that the BBC can do is say, uh, however, an analysis points to images and videos on social media. So here we go with our open source intelligence again that appear to show the Russian military using the Tochka U, but they're not using the Tochka U. They don't have Tochka U. They're finding these things in the field and they're assigning blame to Russia. They don't have a picture of Russia actually going around with Tochka used before they're fired. Show me images of that, and I'll, then I'll believe you that Russia might still be using these very outdated missiles when they have a supply of Iskander missiles to use instead. Now, here is The Guardian. Russia accused of monstrous war crime in Kramatorsk station attack. And you've got Boris Johnson. He says, Russia's actions were unconscionable and a war crime. Speaking at a press conference with the German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, uh, he said Moscow should declare a ceasefire and withdraw its troops. The war has to stop immediately. Why does the war have to stop immediately, Prime Minister Boris Johnson? I thought Ukraine was winning the war. I thought you. I thought Russia was three days away from starving. That's what I kept hearing for the last month. Why would you want the war to stop now, uh, when when you've got them on the run? So. It's very obvious what's going on here. Ukraine is being defeated, and this is what this is exactly what we saw all during the Syrian conflict when the uh, U.S., British, and EU-sponsored terrorists were being routed. They would pull something like this. They would carry out an attack on a civilian population. They would say the Syrian government did it, and then they would call for intervention. They would call for more sanctions. That's what they did throughout the entire conflict until they completely lost. And this is what we're going to see here in Ukraine. Remember, the, the West themselves say they're fighting an information war. 
the West themselves defended Ukraine, making up stories about the ghost of Kiev and Snake Island, saying that they need to do that because they're at a disadvantage. They have to make up stories. They have to make up lies to win in information space where uh, they're losing in the actual battle space. So here, again, this image of the Tochka U sitting there on the ground. Now, here's another video of a Tochka U shot at a population center. This video was taken by Patrick Lancaster. I'm going to put the link to this video in the video description below, but I want to warn you that it is extremely graphic. You will not be able to unsee or unhear the scenes of death and destruction uh, that is in this video. You will not be able to unsee it. So be warned when you watch it. Uh, I'm going to show you a still, however, from this video right here. There it is. That is a Tochka U. And as you can see, it's in the, the middle of Donetsk, town center, purely a civilian target. There's no, no military units in this area at all. This was Ukraine, just as they have done for the last eight years, punishing the people of Donetsk and Luhansk. Uh, shelling them, shelling civilian areas, uh, shooting these missiles that are inaccurate and just plunging them right into the middle of a civilian area and killing civilians, purely civilians, no military personnel at all, just civilians. And again, be, be very careful when you watch that video. That's what Ukraine was caught blatantly doing. This was March 15th, this video. I didn't hear a single sound out of Washington, out of Brussels, out of London. I didn't hear a single sound out of any of them when Ukraine blatantly killed these civilians in Donetsk. And now they did it Kramatorsk, and it's a blatant false flag. And now they're all screaming, and they all want the war to stop because Russia's about to encircle this army in, in Donbass that has been tormenting these people in Donetsk and Luhansk for eight years. It's very, it's very obvious what happened here. It's very obvious Russia isn't gonna write uh, here's for your children on the side of a missile and shoot it into the middle of a rail station where people are trying to evacuate in a town that Russia wants to take over and incorporate into the Donbas region and eventually have the Donbas administration rule over. It's obvious they're not going to do it. It is also obvious that Ukraine would do that. Uh, the Ukrainian forces in the Donbas region are not seen as defenders. They're seen as occupiers. And they treat the people like they're occupied. And they have no reservations at all uh, on their way out of the area of punishing these people as they go. So again, the, the U.S. admits it's waging an information war, that it's going to make up claims that are patently false regarding Russia, regarding chemical weapons, regarding uh, China handing weapons to Russia. All lies. The West admits that they're lies. They're admitting that they were just conducting information warfare, and now they're doing it again. Uh, only this time, it's despicable because they're knowingly shooting missiles at civilians, killing civilians, and then trying to blame it on Russia in a war that Russia is winning, a war that they, the West desperately wants stopped now. Actually, they want the war to go on for as long as possible. They don't want it to end with a Russian victory. They want it, if, they, if it has to end, they want it to end while the propaganda and the people, the, pub, the public, the general public still think Ukraine is winning. They do not want to see a massive encirclement of these forces and the surrender of, of thousands or even tens of thousands of Ukrainian forces. That They do not want that. So they will do anything at all to avoid that and, and keep the, maybe keep the fighting going somewhere else. But whenever, whenever there is a, a major victory on the eve of a major victory for Russia. They, they do not want that. They want to prevent that. And they will pull a stunt like this to do it. And we're going to see more of this. So prepare yourself. And if you're uh, part of the alternative media or you're supporting the alternative media, now more than ever, uh, we have to work hard to expose this because 
they're going to do this again and again and again. And the more Ukraine is losing and the more the West narrative of Ukraine's victory begins to unravel, the more desperate they're going to become and the more they're going to do this. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share. Think about subscribing or following, it's free to do. It helps the channel grow. If you're watching this on YouTube, please check the video description below for other places you can find my work like Odyssey and Rumble in case YouTube deletes my channel. Also in the video description below, there will be the link to Patrick Lancaster's video report on this Tochka U missile attack on downtown Donetsk. And again, be aware, it's extremely violent. It's extremely graphic. And uh, I'll also put the links into that BBC article admitting that it was a Tochka U missile that uh, only Ukraine is using in this conflict. And uh, even if Russia has uh, a handful of them in their inventory, Ukraine is still the primary operator of this weapon system. Just keep that in mind. And the Guardian article, where all of these Western representatives are screaming about this attack after being utterly silent about the, the other Tochka U attack on downtown Donetsk. Just so you understand that the West does not actually care about right and wrong in this conflict. They just want to win. And they're more than happy to turn a blind eye to Ukraine's abuses and war crimes when it suits them politically. Uh, and finally, in the video description below, there are ways you can help support my work. You can do it through Buy Me A Coffee, Patreon, and PayPal to everyone who has been helping out. Thank you so much. And as always, thank you for watching.